Hello, I'm Phil Chen. Um, I was fortunate to hear all the great bass players while living in Jamaica, um, Lloyd Brevet, Audley Williams, um, Ernest Rangdon. Um, what really stood out was the uh, melodic pattern and the tonali tonality of the bass. Then along came James Jameson, who had the same sound and the fat tone. I was very um, impressed and was, I was captivated. In the pursuit of excellence, I searched around and I found one bass amp that gave me everything and more. That was the SWR. I'm Danny Sheridan. I was lucky enough to find out about SWR when uh, it was just a twinkle in Steve's eye. Uh, <laughs> Steve used to be with a uh, huge uh, multinational amplifier company. And uh, I used their gear and when I'd come back, at the end of a tour, it was always broke. So I'd kind of wheel it into the repair shop and Steve would come down and he'd usually laugh at it because I was always modifying something and he had to fix all the fuses that blew up and stuff. Uh, <laughs> when he stopped with, uh, when that company kind of, I guess they kind of folded up shop and uh, he called me, said, uh, what was the line? Something about, what are you doing for the next six months? Would you like to, <laughs> <laughs> would you like to do some design consulting for uh, the best ample, best bass amplifier is ever going to happen. One of the things we always used to talk about when I'd go into the old repair shop was how limited uh, things were for bass guitar in those days. The amplifiers were, in a lot of cases, guitar amps with a different front panel. And uh, so we talked for hours about that. So I said, yeah, I'll come out. We uh, spent a lot of late nights in the now legendary garage workshop out there in Sunland, California. I guess it was Sunland, Tahunga. Like a lot of good rock and roll bands, SWR started in the garage. And it's the way it ought to be.
fact, this bass was made in a garage. Um, this is a 51 Fender, and from what they tell me, Leo and his partner actually made this in Fullerton in a garage. So the company's uh, grown a lot, making probably the best bass gear there is, and a few new models since those days. Factory's a lot bigger, but not too big to bring out the best stuff still for bass. One of the things that was important to me, because I produce also, was uh, bass gear that you could use in the studio. I talked to Steve about one of my early studio experiences with an old uh, MM-1000 16-track recorder. And uh, we plugged one of these old basses right into the front panel. For some reason, there's a quarter-inch input on those. I don't know why. If anybody ever gets a chance to try that out, it's a great sound. And uh, we, Steve, actually, not we, Steve did a lot of measuring technical things and figured out why that was good. And uh, I think that may have had something to do with the, the tube preamp stage uh, in those uh, SM400s. Another thing we kind of we worked on that ended up actually being a knob on the amp is a transparency boost, we call it. it uh, <laughs> some upper frequencies that kind of bring things to life. I like that one. I feel I had something to do with that knob. It's my knob. <laughs> so I play a bass solo here. I'm kind of a basic guy. Play some whole notes. Probably the kind of solo I do. Well, thanks. I'm playing through the uh, SWR Redhead right now, which is one of their newest uh, inventions. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful amp. Let's throw in another wonderful, wonderful. Uh, when I'm on stage, I use their SM400 in stereo because I actually have a bass player in my band. I hire the handicapped. And uh, come on, just kidding, guys. What you need is an amp with a lot of balls, stereo, but also it's got to have a warm sound. And uh, I've played through every amp I can, I can ever think about, and most of them are nightmares, uh, for what I do, in particular for what I do. And uh, any amplifier that's got this logo on it, uh, including the Baby Blue, gives me the sound I'm looking for. And uh, I just love them. They're, uh, they last a long time, too. I haven't been able to hurt mine. And uh, we got it out of the pool like five minutes after it went in. It's great, you know. But uh, nobody got shocked. But uh, I love this gear. And uh, every time somebody comes up to me in a music store or something and says, try this great new thing, it's a refreshing thing because it isn't. Let me tell you. Should I play? We're going to play? Ha, <laughs> 
here with my friends at SWR, helping keep Jive alive here in beautiful California. Uh, I first came across the SWR bass amp in uh, Texas. Fred Wallachie, a good friend of mine, music store operator here in LA, had told me about it. And then I was down in Texas with Lonnie Mack and came across it in uh, the heart of Texas music, down there where Stevie Ray Vaughan and all the great cats are playing. And so I purchased one, got one. I had to have one. And I was out on the road with Lonnie Mack. And I didn't have a road case for it or anything, so we just threw it in the back of the trunk and underneath, and it'd get trashed on and pissed on and everything else. But it worked every night. It was reliable. So it has been around the world once. And I've taken it around the world once. And it still works great. And uh, I wouldn't play anything else but an SWR bass amp. Hi, I'm John Alderetti, and I'm in a band called Saints or Sinners now, and I used to be in a band called Racer X. And uh, I'd just like to say uh, some compliments about this amp. Um, for what I do and how I play, I, uh, I require a lot as far as different tone varieties, because I play with the pick, I play with the, my thumb, slapping-wise, and I play with fingers. And this is the reason why I use this amp, because everything's that, you know, I, I've got it dialed in so I can just control it with the pickups instead of having to go into the amp and or have more than one amp to have every different type of tone and I'd like to show this how um, how this works for my plane so say something like I would do with my fingers I just roll up like usually when I solo I roll out the front pickup just a little I'm sorry and then roll it up a little and then uh, that'll give me my finger tone as you can hear that's basically what I use for finger tone and then um, you know when I go to thumbing something slapping wise I just have both my pickets full up I use this pickup selection um, also for when I play with a pick or when I play with my fingers I have them full up and that gives me this sound there I have like a thumbing sound and then um, also just for like when I play in a band 
and it's full on band sound. I use this with my fingers pick. Sometimes I, I just roll off a little of this transparency knob here and that'll give me the, the sound I need just to roll off just a little high end. Um, because when I play with the pick, I play real hard, and then I end up getting too much pick noise. So I just roll off a little of that, but it's not something I have to completely re-EQ or buy a whole new amp for it. So um, that way, you know, I'll show you how I play like that. Something like... Uh pick up one of these amps and you'll see how versatile it is and you won't have to buy three or four different types of amps. All comes in this package right here with the amazing speakers. <laughs> there you go. I first came across SWR in 1985 and I was uh, going over to Mike Tobias' shop every day, driving him crazy, trying to find the right bass to get. and. Uh, he had this uh, SWR bass amp there, and I, I checked it out initially. Oops, and uh, you know I thought it was very intriguing. And it was a little while after that that I went to uh, Winter Nam Show in Anaheim, and I, I got a chance to hear the amps uh, by themselves out of the Tobias shop, and I really fell in love with them. So I think it was 1987 that I actually fir first bought my, uh, my SM400. And, uh, wow. Hi, I'm Alexis Sklarevsky, a uh, bass player here in Los Angeles. And uh, I first came across uh, the SWR equipment after I ripped off Jerry Watts' car. <laughs> and uh, he had some really good stuff in there. He had some nice cabinets and a nice amp. And uh, after I... After I lifted it out of his car, I took it home, tried it out, and took it out on a couple of gigs. And I liked it so much, I never really gave it back to him. <laughs> but uh, I decided that I would just buy my own, so I sold his stuff, and I bought, uh, I bought some new stuff because the designs had actually changed. So I thought that it, was, it would probably be in my best interest to get new equipment. So um, really, the person that I want to thank for that is Jerry, because he was very understanding, and he hasn't heard about this until right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mark Brown, and I'm currently on tour with Wilson Phillips. And uh, my first introduction to SWR gear is when uh, I uh, answered an ad out of the uh, classified ads. Um, there was uh, a bass player named uh, Sklarevsky or something like that was selling a, a, a used uh, SM400. It was an older model, but um, he seemed to want to get rid of it real quick, so I, uh, I picked it up and... Uh, it was great. It sounded really good. Um, since then, I bought a whole new SWR gear, and a whole new rig, and, um, and I love it. I tour with it. I've been using it for about three, four years now, and there's nothing better. I was introduced to SWR initially through some advertisements in some of the trade magazines, and uh, I went down to, the st to one of the music stores here one day, and uh, uh, tried out the gear and was just blown away. And then through a, another SWR and Dorsey friend of mine, Mark Brown, he brought me down and I met Steve and, and everyone here and, and uh, bought a redhead and a Goliath Jr. And uh, there was no looking back after that, straight ahead. <laughs>
What is SWR? Uh, what are all the uh, the names? Do you know what the SWR stands for? I sure don't. I don't know what it stands for. It stands for uh, quality. Ricky Minor? I think he was the guy. Ricky Minor, good friend of mine. I guess I was out listening to him play one night, and um, uh, he was using the SWR, the SM400. And uh, I, was, I was digging it. I was liking it. And I just had to check it out, so he brought me down and met Steve and the guys. And I tried it out with my bass. It was it. That was it. I, I found what I was looking for all these years, and uh, I've been happy with it ever since. SWR. Hi. My name is Neil Steubenhaus. Some of you know me, some of you don't. Preferably, I'm speaking to those who don't, I guess. So, I was asked to come here today to talk about this equipment. I own this equipment. I bought it. Um, essentially, I haven't bought an amplifier for small applications and studio applications for 12 years. And the reason is, that there was never anything that was really good enough for what I wanted, and there was no reason to change, because I just mostly plug and direct and use an amp as a monitor and play. So one day I went to the NAMM show, and Steve said, look what I built. And I said, 
That's marvelous. Can I have one of these, please? Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Can I have another one? Thanks. So I bought this amp. Here's why I bought the amp. This is the most versatile extension of a bass guitar for studio applications or small room uh, to medium room applications that I've ever seen in my life. The reason is, for one thing, it accommodates a rack space where you can put your effects in and blend them in any way you want. And with the variety of special effects on the market that are all one rack space, this is perfect. Second reason, it's got a direct box. How unbelievably professional. That's probably one of the main reasons that this amp is considered studio professional. It's got a direct box. I actually modified mine to have an extra one, but you can't have that. So we won't talk about it. So the direct box in combination with this rack space are two incredibly good reasons, right? Uh, the third reason is this little logo. See, SWR? That's a beautiful thing. People like to see that. They say, oh, you've got an SWR? You're good. Hey, I want that guy on all my sessions. See, that's part of my work, too. <laughs> Hi, I'm Keith Jones, and this is Michael Wilcox, and uh, play. This piece that uh, Keith and I are going to perform is our adaption of Claude Debussy's Arabesque No. 1, and this is uh, featured in the March-April 91 issue of Bass Player Magazine. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hi, my name's Tim Bogart, and I use SWR amps because I think they're real good. I met Steve Robbie at an AM show one time, and we were working in the same area, and I played his amplifier that weekend, and I thought it was real good, so now I've got one, and I like them a lot. Tell the truth, cause it's me. They're telling me that we are through. I've been loving you such a long, long time that I didn't know you had the blue. I'm just going to do a little, a little groove here. I've got a little drum machine pattern that I'm going to, that I'm going to uh, turn on and. Uh, just play a little bit of funk stuff for you, um, doing some thumb stuff and throwing in a few triplets and just taking a line and kind of embellishing it a little bit. My name is Jimmy Haslip, and I play with the Yellow Jackets, and uh, I've had the pleasure of being affiliated with SWR now for about three years, and um, I feel very fortunate to be in the company of such a great company. This is a tune called Bessie's Blues. Thank you. 
You know, I got into this stuff by uh, when I first started working with Lou Reed. Um, he asked me what kind of amp I had, and I said uh, an old Ampeg B15. And he didn't think that would cut it with a rock band, <laughs> so he suggested that I buy some new stuff if I wanted to, uh, you know, go on the road with him. And I said, "Gosh, it's going to cost money." <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I thought about it very seriously, and uh, I asked him if he had any ideas, and he said, well, his ex-bass player, Fernando Saunders, uh, used SWR stuff. So I said, oh, huh, well, that's a real good recommendation. And he talked to Fernando, and I talked to Fernando, and he raved about it. Uh, so I called up Steve Robbie. And uh, I guess the rest is history. <laughs>
Duet. <laughs> a new career. <laughs> SWR. Shit works right. <laughs> That's what it stands for. One feature of um, these high-end basses is that they tend to be neck through body, which if you probably are more familiar with Joan, you can see that the neck goes through. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 